Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Devane County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 25, hosted by SSCL librarian Linda Reimer. This video cast is being recorded on Thursday, October 15th, 2020. Kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week, courtesy of the New York Times. At number one, Troubles in Paradise by Ellen Hildebrand. The final installment of the trilogy that includes Winter in Paradise and What Happens in Paradise. At number two, The Searcher by Tanya French. After a divorce, a former Chicago police officer resettles in an Irish village where a boy goes missing. At number three, The Return by Nicholas Sparks. A doctor serving in the Navy in Afghanistan goes back to North Carolina where two women change his life. At number four, Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, a family vacation in an isolated part of Long Island, is thrown into confusion when the home's owners return, claiming New York City is having a blackout. And at number five, The Invisible Life of A.D. LaRue by B.E. Schwab. A Faustian bargain comes with a curse that affects the adventure A.D. LaRue has across centuries. And on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week. At number one, Humans by Brandon Stanton. Photos and stories of people from over 40 countries collected by the creator of the book, Humans of New York. At number two, Is This Anything? by Jerry Seinfeld. The comedian shares material he collected in an accordion folder over the last 45 years. At number three, The 99% Invisible City by Roman Mars and Kurt Kolstad. A look at the design and architecture of various and sometimes unexpected elements that make cities function. At number four, Rage by Bob Woodward. Based on 17 on-the-record interviews with President Trump and other reporting, the Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist details the president's perspective on multiple crises. And rounding out the top five, Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. The Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist examines aspects of caste systems across civilizations and reveals a rigid hierarchy in America today. Our first recommended read for this week is a novel, The Searcher, written by Tanya French. After 25 years as a Chicago cop, Cal Hooper, the protagonist of the superb standalone from Edgar Winter French, decided he needed a change. So he moved to a village in the west of Ireland no bigger than the little end of nothing, where people leave their doors unlocked. After three months, his prosaic new life ends when he's sought out by a 12-year-old, Trey Reddy, who has learned of Cooper's former profession. Trey fears something bad has happened to his 19-year-old brother, Brendan, who hasn't been seen in about six months. Because their mother, Sheila, is convinced Brendan took off on his own, Trey hasn't gone to the police, though the boy is certain that his brother would not have done that. Despite Hooper's cynicism, anyone could do anything, he thinks to himself, he agrees to look into the matter, starting with questioning Sheila. The more Hooper digs, the more he finds that his new community conceals dark secrets. 
insightful characterizations, even of minor figures, and a devastating reveal help make this a standout. Crime fiction fans won't want to miss this one. And that is the Star Publishers Weekly Review. Our second recommended read of the week is nonfiction. It's called Trust, America's Best Chance by Pete Buttigieg. In Trust, Pete Buttigieg demonstrates how trust will be essential in order to face the unique challenges of the decades ahead. Trust is essential to the foundation of America's democracy, asserts Pete Buttigieg, the former presidential candidate and South Bend mayor. Yet, in a century warped by terrorism, financial collapse, Trumpist populism, systemic racism, and now a global pandemic, trust has been squandered, sacrificed, abused, stolen, or never properly built in the first place. And now, more so than ever before, Americans must work side by side to reckon with the monumental challenges posed by our present moment. Interweaving history, political philosophy, and effecting passages of memoir, Buttigieg explores the strong relationship between measures of prosperity and levels of social trust. He provides an impassioned account of a threefold crisis of trust in our institutions, in each other, and in the American project itself. Today, these perilous patterns of distrust have wreaked havoc on nearly every sector of society as Americans increasingly resent the very government that needs to be part of the solution. With the internet and partisan television networks acting as accelerants, Americans jettison any sense of shared reality, lose confidence in experts and scientists, and cope with the grim national tragedy of a pandemic that has only further exemplified the lethality of distrust. Buttigieg contends that our success or failure at confronting the greatest challenges of the decade, racial and economic justice, pandemic resilience, and climate action will rest on whether we can effectively cultivate deepen, and where necessary, repair the networks of trust that are now endangered, or for so many, have never existed. An urgent call to foster an American way of trust at this painfully polarized juncture in the nation's history, trust is a direct reckoning with the prevailing corruption of social responsibility. Yet refusing to give in to the despair that threatens our foundations, trust seeks to inspire Americans to build a powerful movement that will define all of us in the years to come. And that is our second recommended read for this week. Our first audiobook recommendation of the week is another holiday story. And again, I'm letting you know about these holiday audiobooks, just one or two more, I promise, because if you wish to place them on hold, through the digital catalog, you'll need to do that shortly to make sure that you can hear this before the holiday season ends. So the book is called Silent Bite. It's an Andy Carpenter series mystery written by David Rosenfeld and read by Grover Gardner. Edgar finalist Rosenfeld's entertaining 22nd mystery featuring semi-retired defense attorney Andy Carpenter finds Andy and his family returning home to Patterson, New Jersey after a Caribbean cruise, which Andy didn't particularly enjoy. Once home, he gets a call from Willie Miller, his friend and partner in the Terror Foundation, a dog rescue operation. Willie wants Andy to defend Tony Birch, who was paroled from prison three years earlier following a manslaughter conviction. Tony has since been on the straight and narrow, recently taking over the shop where he worked as a mechanic after the owner retired. 
Now evidence is stacking up against Tony for the murder of a former associate of his who testified against him at his manslaughter trial. The fatal shooting of another former associate of Tony's raises the ante. Andy steps into the courtroom to defend his client with the sublime self-assurance of Perry Mason. Loads of dog lore and Andy's gripes about things that get under his skin add to the fun. This long-running series remains as fresh as ever. And that's definitely on my to-read list as compared to to listen, but either way, it should be a fun book. Our second audiobook recommendation of the week is the new John Grisham novel, A Time for Mercy, obviously written by John Grisham and read by Michael Beck. Jake Briggins is back, the hero of A Time to Kill, one of the most popular novels of our time, returns in a courtroom drama that showcases number one New York Times bestselling author John Grisham at the height of his storytelling powers. Clanton, Mississippi, 1990. Jake Briggins finds himself embroiled in a deeply divisive trial when the court appoints him attorney for Drew Gamble, a timid 16-year-old boy accused of murdering a local deputy. Minnie and Clanton want a swift trial and the death penalty. But Briggins digs in and discovers that there is more to the story than meets the eye. Jake's fierce commitment to saving Drew from the gas chamber puts his career, his financial security, and the safety of his family on the line. In what may be the most personal and accomplished legal thriller of John Grisham's storied career, we deepen our acquaintance with the iconic southern town of Clanton and the vivid cast of characters that so many readers know and cherish. The result is a richly rewarding novel that is both timely and timeless, full of wit, drama, and most of all, heart. Bursting with all the courtroom scheming, small town intrigue, and stunning plot twists that have become the hallmarks of the master of the legal thriller, A Time for Mercy is John Grisham's most powerful courtroom drama yet. There is a time to kill, and a time for justice, and now comes a time for mercy. That sounds great too. Moving on to our first streaming recommendation for this week. It's called The Glorious. It just came out and it's available through Amazon Prime Video. Gloria Steinem has lived such a long and significant life that it takes four actresses to play her, including two Oscar winners in The Glorious. That device of having multiple performers portray the veteran journalist and activist, and sometimes even having them engage in conversations with each other, is the most effective element of director Judy Tanmore's effort to encompass a whole complicated life while also avoiding traditional biopic tropes. For the most part, she's successful. Just when you think she's heading into cliche territory, Tamor mixes it up, plays with structure, and subverts your expectations. Working from a script she co-wrote with Sarah Rule, based on Steinem's autobiography, My Life on the Road, Tamor hops around in time between Steinem's youth in Toledo, Ohio, and her rural travels in her 20s, through the beginning of her writing career, and her key role in the women's liberation movement of the 1960s and 70s. And while there's a continuity to the performances, the hair, the voice, those signature oversized aviator glasses, each actress imbibes her role with a specific vibe and edge as Steinem evolves. Julianne Moore gets the bulk of the screen time as Steinem from her Ms. Magazine years and beyond and radiates both indigent idealism and world-weary wisdom. But Alicia Vikander meets and exceeds her own challenges as a younger Steinem from her time at Smith College through her travels in India 
and her groundbreaking undercover Playboy Bunny article, which put her on the map in 1963. Before that, we see little Gloria, an energetic girl who worshipped her struggling entrepreneur dad, and teenage Gloria, who learned how to fight for others by caring for her physically and mentally ailing mother. Gloria Steinem has indeed led an extraordinary life, and if you'd like to know more about her life, check this video out. The review is from Christy Lee Meyer of RogerEbert.com. Our second recommended video for this week is the new season of Fargo, available through FX. This is getting great reviews, by the way, but this is the shortest review I could find because we don't want a three-hour edition of Library Connection, so I try and keep the reviews relatively short. But I digress. Back to Fargo Season 4. In 1950 Kansas City, the fourth installment of Fargo centers on two criminal syndicates who are fighting for a piece of the American dream and have struck an uneasy peace. Together, they control an alternate economy of exploitation, graft, and drugs. To cement their truce, Loy Cannon, the head of the African-American crime family, trades his youngest son, Satchel, to his enemy, Donatello Fada, the head of the Italian Mafia. In return, Donatello surrenders his youngest son, Zero, to Loy. Intertwined with this tale of immigration, assimilation, and power are the stories of Justo Fada, the impulsive and self-indulgent heir apparent to the Fada crime family, Donatello's adopted son, Rabbi Milligan, Detective Otis Weff, Oretta Mayflower, Ethel Rida Pearl Smooty, the precocious 16-year-old daughter of Thurman and Dibral Smooty, and U.S. Marshal Dick Deefy Wickware. That is the epic summary. This season of Fargo is getting excellent reviews. Apologies if I'm not spot on with the pronunciation of some of those names. I haven't seen the fourth season of this series yet, so it's something close to those pronunciations. And here's our final streaming recommendation for this week. This one too is new, it just came out. A Life on Our Planet available through Netflix. It's a David Attenborough documentary, and Attenborough has this to say, I am 94. I've had an extraordinary life. It's only now that I appreciate how extraordinary. As a young man, I felt I was out there in the wild, experiencing the untouched natural world, but it was an illusion. The tragedy of our time has been happening all around us, fairly noticeable from day to day. The loss of our planet's wild places, its biodiversity. I have been witness to this decline. A life on our planet is my witness statement and my vision for the future. It is the story of how we came to make this our greatest mistake and how if we act now, we can yet put it right. We have one final chance to create the perfect home for ourselves and restore the wonderful world we inherited. All we need is the will to do so. The documentary and the companion book are both called A Life on Our Planet. And available now, of course, for streaming and reading. Moving on to my Hoopla recommendation for this week. The format this week is a streaming video. It's the movie The Commitments from 1991. This is a terrific film if you've never seen it. It's got drama, it's got humor, it's got some great music. It does have a salty dialogue, particularly that four letter word that starts with F. So if you don't like salty dialogue, don't watch this film. And if you find, as I know people have in the past, they've mentioned to me that it's hard to understand the dialogue because of course we have American accents over here. You can always turn on the subtitles, but it's a great film. It's a lot of fun. So let me read you the summary of the plot. In the north side of Dublin, Jimmy Rabbi aspires to manage the world's greatest band with only one music in mind, soul. By advertising for applicants in a newspaper, 
and asking around to promising acquaintances, Jimmy holds auditions at his parents' home and assembles a band together. Unlike his idols, Jimmy's band is white. With the help of Joey Ellipse Fagan, a veteran musician who answers the ad and joins the band, and who has unlikely stories about meeting and working with famous musicians, Jimmy begins to whip the members into shape, gradually coming together beautifully on stage, only to have the group fall apart in a clash of egos. It's a terrific film. If you've seen it before, you might want to watch it again. It would make a nice compliment to the movie That Thing That You Do, which is also a music-based film, but I didn't know if that's available through Hoopla, so you can scratch that as a being associated with a particular source. And just a final note on Hoopla, I'm going to repeat myself for a number of weeks here. You do have to have a Corning Library card to use Hoopla. So it has to be an orange card with the numeric prefix 10014. If you want to inquire about how to get one, feel free to call the library at the number listed later in this video cast. And on to our odd duck recommendation for this week. This week I'm going to talk about the Empire State Maker Fair, which is occurring virtually this year, of course, all online on Friday, October 16th and Saturday, October 17th. And you can, of course, type in the web address there, makerfair.com forward slash empire dash maker dash fair dash 2020. But you can also just Google it. Type in Empire State Maker Fair and the top search results should be what you see in the bottom right hand corner there. And if you click on that, you'll be redirected to the website, which we're going to take a look at in just a second here. And here we see the Empire State Maker Fair website. If you scroll down, you'll see it left here. It says schedule and at right submit an online entry because you can still participate if you'd like to. You just click apply now. We're going to click on see full schedule here at the left so that we can see what's going on and when. You'll see here it says create a no sew tote bag with author Kathy Sorelli Friday 9 to 9.50 a.m. So you would just click on that if you want to create your own animated hero in Piskel, I think it's pronounced. You click on that. That's Friday, 9 30 to 10 15. So there's all kinds of stuff on here that you could check out and enjoy Friday and Saturday. And that is the odd duck for the week. And that was my cat Piper. She also likes being creative, don't you? And here are our photos of the week. At left, we see a rainbow shot. I took one afternoon as I came out of Wegmans, and lo and behold, there was a double rainbow. I thought that was pretty terrific. And at right, you see an autumn alley. That photo was taken on the South Side Hill. We do live in a beautiful area here in the Southern Tier. And those are our photos of the week. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, please send an email to me at rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. Piper says so too. Just a reminder, the library is currently closed. Our annex closed on October 2nd, and we are working on getting our home at Civic Center Plaza ready for the public after the lengthy HVAC upgrade. The library will reopen in our home building at 300 Civic Center Plaza, Corning, on Monday, October 26, 2020. If you want to learn more, check out the official Q&A section found on the library's website at sslibrary.org and you would just click on the purple to learn more. Click here at the bottom of the page. Piper's enthusiastic about the library reopening. And that is the end of Library Connections content for this week. What follows are the informational credits. The credits include links to articles used to create this week's video, directions as to how to access the library's website, catalogs, blogs, and social media pages, and the library's contact information. So library resources you can access from home page one, going clockwise from the top left hand corner, you see the library's website found ssclibrary.org. And I can see I need to update the picture there, but it does give you accurate information. We will reopen in our building on October 26th. 
Top right hand corner shows the schedule and appointment page for curbside pickup. You can't schedule an appointment for curbside pickup even after the library reopens at Civic Center Plaza. You can also call the library, but if you wish to do it online, it's ssclibrary.org forward slash appointment. In the bottom right hand corner, we see the Hoopla catalog. That's the library's new service of instant checkout material, including the formats, comic books, ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. There are apps for that for mobile devices and your smart TV. And at the bottom left hand corner of the page, we see StarCat, the catalog of physical library materials, including print books, DVDs, etc. So you can go to StarCat and request materials be held for you at our library, and then come in and pick them up or arrange for curbside pickup. Library resources you can access from home page two. At left, we see the web version of the digital catalog where you can check out ebooks and audiobooks and place holds on them if they are checked out, as that's a one copy, one user format. The digital catalog can also be accessed through mobile devices via the Libby app seen in the bottom left hand corner or the Overdrive app, which is the blue app with the big white O. The difference is that Libby is for newer devices and Overdrive is for older devices. Also of note, you can still check out digital content from the digital catalog to an e-reader that is in the form of ebooks. So if you want to check out ebooks and read them on your Kindle Paperwhite, you can do that. On the right side of the page, we see RB Digital. For right now, we have an RB Digital site and the RB Digital app is the red one in the bottom right hand corner of the page here. I say for right now because RB Digital has been purchased by the Overdrive company. Those are the folks that make the Libby and Overdrive apps and host the digital catalog seen at left. So RB Digital content will be merged with Overdrive in the near future. The library blogs full of fun content, and indeed they are. We have the Book Club for Adults, According to NY History, our local history blog, Creation Stationery, which is the library's makerspace blog, Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, and Tech and Book Talk, which is found at ssctech.com and features what sounds like a little bit of tech tips and some reading and listening recommendations, sort of related to library connections. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic or want to make an appointment to browse, pick up, or return items once the library reopens on October 26th, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's telephone number is area code 607-936-3713. Also of note, new library hours are coming on Monday, October 26th. We will be open Mondays and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and we will be closed on Sundays. Also of note, on Wednesdays, the library will be closed to the general public, but open for pre-registered students from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., to accommodate the Corning Painters Post School District's virtual learning days. And on a final note, you can also call the library between now and October 26th. We are open to the public, but during the week, you'll find staff in the building and they will pick up the phone and answer any questions you might have. Social media. Just a weekly reminder, you can connect with the library, read library news, and post questions to the library by social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. In relation, each video in this series is available on demand via the library's YouTube channel after it has first been shown on Facebook Live. And here are our references of the week should anyone wish to read more on any of the items reviewed or mentioned. And that's the program for this week. See you next week with another edition of Library Connections. And as our buddy Phil Esterhouse used to say on Hill Street Blues, be careful out there.